Hello everybody, it's me, Ghost Critic. I've got a question of the week for you. If you're new to my channel, and a few of you recently have been, thank you very much for subscribing to my channel. Every Monday I pose a comic book related question that you guys will get to answer in the comments section below. I also give you the opportunity to pose a question to me to which I answer in next week's video. More about that in just a bit. Um, this week, um, again, I've been going through my long boxes, doing a little bit of sorting out here and there, and I came across this issue of New X-Men, uh, Grant Morrison and Frank Quietly's run back in 2002. And the special thing about this one was, um, and I have to say, I didn't see many after this, uh, is this little tag here. If I bring it a little bit closer, it says, Nuff said. This is uh, something Marvel used to do, I think pretty much on a yearly basis, where um, the creators of that book would have to tell the story without words. It was purely told through the artwork. So, my question to you is, if this Nuff Said story um, device um, happened to pop up again, what title would you like to see it being used on? And it doesn't have to be a Marvel title, even though they were the kind of publishing house that used to do this. Um, so yes, which title, what book currently out now, doesn't have to be Marvel, would you like a Nuff Said issue done for? I'll wait your comments down there. Um, okay, so yes, I give you the chance to pose questions to me where I answer them in the following week's video. So anyone who asked me a question last week will get it answered now. If, you, if you're doing videos as well here on YouTube, I put a link to your channel in the description bar. So remember to expand that, um, that description bar. And if you're not already subscribed to these people, go and have a look at their videos. If you like them, put a comment in the, um, in the old comment section box of theirs, give them a thumbs up, and of course, subscribe to their channel too. Now, I have to apologize, there has been some messy stuff with YouTube and comments, some have been disappearing, and I've missed a couple of your questions. So, give me a poke if you think I've missed one of your questions, uh, and I'll make sure that I answer them in the following week. Um, I do try as soon as you know someone asks me a question I write it down so I don't one forget it and two lose it to the YouTube abyss where comments seem to fall in and disappear. Um, so moving on to this week, um, one, two, three, four, five questions were posed to me and I'm going to start with Sleepy Reader 666 and he asked me, do you find it difficult to switch reading modes between Silver Bronze Age comics um, and is it a different experience for you? I presume he means to today's comics. Um, and I have to say, I guess it's, for me, because obviously I've been reading comment, com, I've been reading comics for quite some time now, um, and picking up back issues from the Silver and the Bronze Age, and I think I got used to what I'm going to expect when I read a Silver or Bronze Age books, um, not to put these books down, but the storytelling was obviously a lot simpler, they got wrapped up a lot quicker, you didn't have these sprawling events like we have these days. Um, you'd be lucky if a storyline went over two issues. Um, so I, I don't, I kind of address it, I've got a Silver Age book or I've got a Bronze Age book, so I kind of know what I'm going to expect to read and I kind of 
retrain my brain, so to speak, to expect more frivolous storytelling. I, it sounds like I'm knocking it because there are some great stuff uh, back in, in the other eras of, of comic book um, history. Um, and then obviously, if I read a modern age comic book, one that's coming out now, I know there's going to be an element of sophisticated storyline. Um, and to be honest, let's let let's be honest here, um, a far more adult telling of a story. Um, back in the silver and bronze age days, it was firmly, you know, pushed. These were like. Don't like to say it, but they they were they were aimed at children. They were aimed at teenagers. Um, they were a form of you know light entertainment, uh, and so the storytelling showed that. Simple as that, really. Um, so no, I don't find it difficult. I kind of just adjusted my brain over the years for when I'm reading those type of books and titles. Uh, Ryan C asked, your favourite and least favourite Alan Moore comics? Um, now, it's a bit difficult to say, it, your favourite and least favourite Alan Moore, that's like saying what's your least and most favourite piece of steak. They're all good. <laughs> the only thing with uh, the difference between Steak and Alan Moore is I've read a lot more Steak than I have read Alan Moore, to be fair. Um, I've obviously read the big one, Watchmen. Um, I've read uh, some bits that he did for 2000 AD. I've read Captain Britain, the only thing he did for Marvel. And I have to say, my personal favourite work of um, Alan Moore's is actually B for Vendetta. Um, I don't know whether it's because it's set in in Britain um, or it's kind of got this big brother storyline that kind of appeals to me um, but I kind of enjoyed reading that much more. Um, I, I can't put my finger on why. Um, it's not because Watchmen is is not a great um, kind of a genre changing um, kind of book. It is. Um, I just think it's just a little bit too easy to go. Yeah, Watchmen is my favourite. I think that goes without saying um, uh, for for the most part. I'd like to read a lot more of his stuff. Um, I think I've kind. Of, I don't know whether I've just thought of this before or I have answered a question like this because I have, I'm sure I've said in the past that I'd like to read a lot more of his League of Extraordinary Gentlemen universe. I've kind of dipped my toe in and out of that, um, just kind of like trade reading, but I've never read the whole thing. So I'd like to get more into that and see if that's just as good, which I'm sure it is. Uh, Joshua Hayes asked, do you remember the first comic book you ever read? No. No. <laughs> no. Um, I think this kind of goes back to my history of comics video, um, which is there. You can go and try and find it uh, and watch that and find out how my comic book um, history and reading developed. Um, but as I've always said about comic books um, and reading them from the UK and comparing it to what you guys in the US had, um, it was very, very difficult to find US comics uh, back in my early youth. And we had uh, the kind of funnies type of books. Um, and they, I mean, I obviously remember all those, the Dandy, the Beano, Wizard and Chips and all those. Um, but I kind of remember when the Eagle comic got um, got relaunched again. Um, I want to say the late 70s, early 80s. It's probably the early 80s. Um, and it was a kind of anthology series. It had um, not only drawn comic book stories, but also um, photo stories. This would be actors... Um, dressed up, you know, proper people, they'd take a photo of them in a pose and then they would put the word bubbles and the thought bubbles and all those around the page as well. 
Um, and I loved getting into that. You had Dandere in the Mekon, you had a character, I think he was called Doom. He was from an alien, he was an alien from another planet, but he was a bad alien. And the story just centered on him. Um, uh, and that was one of those kind of photo stories that as the series developed, uh, it became drawn instead. I think the idea of the photo story kind of had had it had had its day, um, and people wanted the more artwork. So he did ask, "What's your oldest comic reading memory?" Um, and I mean, they, they are they are them really. Um, obviously, again, I've said this in the other video of my history of comic book reading. Um, I remember the fish market with all the rows of boxes right in the corner uh, and I used to pick out all these horror comics and want to rush home to read them all. Um, so those were a couple of my kind of earliest memories of reading comic books. Um, Chris Cowgill asked, what is the emotional, what is your most emotional comic moment? Um, and he put an example of what he'd read um, that really gave, had a really emotional content for him. Um, I always recommend this book. Um, there is uh, an issue within it that even before my dad died, um, it just it almost brought me to tears and it has done um, in the past and more so now my, my father has died. But um, Fabio Moon and Gabriel Barr's Day Trip, but I recommend this book to absolutely everybody. Everybody should read this book. It's a fantastic story. It's a very unusual way of telling a story, but there is an issue, I believe it's issue nine, it's called Dream. And there is a, a series of pages and it's the father talking to his son about death. And it kills me every time. I, I, can't, I don't even want to read it out now because I can feel myself getting choked up already. And it is, it is hard hitting. It really touches um, you right in the heart. And just go out and read this book. It's a fantastic storyline. Um, a beautiful artwork uh, and very interesting. So emotional. Oh, finally, um, Jess S asked, and she was the one, one of the ones that I'd lost her question that she asked a couple weeks ago, um, and it was about the announcement of the female Thor. And she asked, "What are the comic?" Book character who is currently male would you like to see tried as a female and this is actually quite tough to think of because there are so many kind of female alternatives that have been done in the comic book view universe I mean DC Superman Superwoman Batman Batwoman uh, Hawkman Hawk Girl um, you could say Aquaman and Mira they kind of have the same kind of powers and that. And then going to Marvel, you've got Spider-Man, Spider-Woman. Um, <clears throat> who else have you got? Deadpool's been made female in the past. Um, and I just thought, who hasn't really been changed? And then I thought, um, someone correct me if I'm wrong, but have we ever seen a female version of The Flash? Um, I'm sure he has been done as a female before. Uh, it might be one of those alternative timelines or elseworld kind of stories, but a female Doctor Strange, I'm pretty sure it has been done before. Um, I think Clea, his kind of apprentice lover, um, became the Sorcerer Supreme at one point, um, but to have one now currently, let's have Doctor Strange be a woman. I hope I answered all those questions okay for you guys. Thank you for sticking with me till now. Again, remember to answer my question to you that I posed right at the top of this video and throw some questions back at me. It can be comic book related, 
doesn't have to be people have decided not to bother and as long as I think they're suitable to put in the video next week I will answer them until next week I will see you then bye bye